Hello and welcome to the next chapter in this ongoing series of tutorials that will help familiarize you and improve your skills in Corel PaintShop Photo Pro X3. This is Robert Corel. In today's short lesson I'm going to show you how to brighten dark subjects. In this lesson I'm going to start on the desktop so you can see how I launch Corel PaintShop Photo Pro X3 and go through the organizer to get to my photos. And here we go. We're in the organizer now of Photo Pro X3, which is a different way of operating than in prior versions, where you would go directly to the editor and the organizer was sort of a built-in bottom pane. In this case, you have a large interface specifically designed to organize your photos. I'm going to click Browse More Photos and go to a working folder that I have on my desktop, which has four subfolders in it, and just click OK to add that to my watch list here. Now I can navigate into the subfolders and click them just like I would Windows Explorer. I can scroll through those and look at the thumbnails at the bottom. And if I select the photo, I can see a large preview show up in the main part of the screen where I can work within the organizer in general. I'm going to go into bright and dark subjects and double click a picture of my daughter Grace at the zoo to open that in the editor. And now, for this technique, I'm going to brighten some of the darker areas in the shadow part of her face and around her top. A nice photo taken at the zoo on a nice day. There's really not a whole lot you need to do to this, but sometimes that's the story of photo retouching and sprucing up, making a good photo even better. So in this case, though, I'm not going to use the standard Adjust Brightness and Contrast menus like highlight, midtone, and shadow. That would work. You could also do a histogram adjustment or use one of the brushes here to lighten some areas around her face. But this technique involves creating a duplicate layer of the photo and then using a couple of tricks. I'm going to use a negative image on that layer and then we're also going to convert that layer to black and white, blur it a little bit, and then change the blend mode. Pretty exciting. First, to duplicate the layer, right-click the layer in the Layers palette, select Duplicate, and then Rename if you like. And from there, you can go a couple of different ways. You can turn this layer to black and white first, and then invert it, or vice versa. It almost doesn't matter. I'm going to choose then Adjust, Color, channel mixer first to turn this layer to grayscale. So my output channel is gray and I'm changing the source channel percentage here to my own liking and then making sure that's checked to monochrome, selecting OK, turns this layer to grayscale. The problem with choosing image grayscale is it removes all color from the entire image and I don't want that. I want that background layer still in color. So with this layer black and white, I'm going to now invert it by choosing Image, Negative. And that changes this layer to then a negative black and white image. Now I'm going to blur it just a little bit. Adjust, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And then play with the radius. I'm going to lower that down a little bit. and press OK. Finally, I'm going to change the blend mode for this layer from normal to overlay. Change that back to overlay. Now I'm going to zoom in some. Still wants to use that. There we go. Doesn't look too great now, but that will change. Now, to recap so far, we've duplicated the background layer, inverted it, turned it to grayscale, it blurred it a tad, and then changed the blend mode to overlay. That's going to essentially turn darker shades lighter and lighter shades darker of the background layer. Now, usually it doesn't turn out looking too good to start with. You've got to reduce the opacity to blend that in better. And essentially, that evens the tones across the image a little better. 
what you can see before and after. Her face has definitely improved and lightened up. And then some of the lighter spots have come down just a little bit. So find a good opacity and then leave that there. Now what you can do after that is if you feel like it, you can create a mask and either mask out the background. Maybe you don't want the background change. You want a little higher sense of contrast there. So what you can do is select your subject roughly. Choose layers, new mask layer, and then show selection. And that'll mask out the background. Then switch to the eraser. Make sure your eraser color, which is the background and fill property, is black. Let's deselect all this. Make sure our mask is selected and then erase around, get that mask closer to her. And I'm just really rough cutting this. And that essentially blends then her, which the brightness on, on Grace has been changed, within the background, which has not been changed. Now from here, and you can fine tune and adjust these and spend a lot of time working on specific parts of this, um, which I'm not going to do at the moment. But you can now select all, which is control A, copy special, merged, and then paste that as a new layer to lock in all the changes, all the masks, and all the blend mode changes. Now, that was stuck here in this group, which I don't want it to, so I'm going to open up my Layers palette, drag it back out, close this group back up, and now I have that top layer isolated by itself. Now I can also select None Now. Now from here, basically you might want to do Smart Photo Fix or make other adjustments to the contrast, let's say, um, and color and fix the image up more the way you want it. But essentially what I wanted to show uh, in this lesson was how to use this layer technique to um, lighten darker areas of the face and uh, darken maybe some other highlights. So there you go. Have fun with this and uh, experiment and practice with all the settings, the opacity settings, and turning things into the grayscale and then masking things in or out. So it's a pretty fun technique to use.